right, so here's a little tangent and uh, a little story. And uh, it's, it's probably going to go off into a bunch of other places. So let's, uh, let's get down to it. Uh, about four years ago, five years ago, I had uh, a Nissan Maxima. And I really liked it. And um, it was a, they're not bad cars, really. Uh, so I was all excited. You know, for the first time I had a six CD changer in one of my cars. Because my first car was a uh, Pontiac. And it was, it was my great uncle's. And it, it was just not, it sucked. It's, it sat in the driveway for like a year before I even got my license. But we just acquired the car so that I had a car. Um, when that shit the bed, I got the Nissan Maxima. And uh, my father got it for me. And, um, so, you know, I'm buzzing around in that thing. I land the job at FedEx for the first time. Um, that's when I was a driver. And uh, at the time, I was already working a job at New Penn Motor Express. So what I would do is I would go into New Penn Motor Express at 10 a.m., stay there till about 4 p.m., and then I'd have to be at FedEx uh, at 7 p.m. So I'd, you know, go home, do my thing, and then I'd go into work at FedEx. Now, FedEx was in Boston. This is when I was working in Boston. So the commute at that time and night wasn't bad. When I became a driver, it became bad because then I had to be there by 4 p.m. I had quit New Penn Motor Express. Um, and uh, driving into Boston at 4 p.m., especially in the summer, in a car where you have no AC at all, uh, sitting in traffic, for, it takes like two and a half hours to get in there. I live not like 25 minutes from Boston. And it took like two and a half hours to get in there. I was always late, which they didn't care about because I always got shit done. But by the time I got there, like I was sweating, I would take an ice cold, like literally like an ice block of Poland Springs water. Like, I would keep it in the freezer and it would be completely solid. By the time I got there, there was no ice. And it, it had completely melted. I blame the leather seats, honestly. But anyway. Um, jobs aside. I... I had the Nissan. And... I... Sort of took care of it. Uh, I'm not good with cars. I know, this one I have now, my Honda Accord, I'm taking care of because I like the black interior, and obviously you got to take care of your car. So, uh, so I'm coming off, I'm coming home from New Penn Motor Express. I'm supposed to be at FedEx later that night. So I'm coming off the, uh, I'm on the off ramp. I'm at a stop sign. A couple towns over, actually, it's the next town over. Um, and that intersection is a nightmare. It's like the busiest, most miserable fucking intersection you could ever imagine. It's so confusing. It's, I knew what I was doing, but it's so confusing. And my car, I'm at the stoplight. Light turns green. I go to move. The car's off. I was like thinking, I was just like off in my thoughts, waiting for the light to turn green. The car's just off. So, so people are beeping to me, and I, I, like, got out of the car, and I was just like, and the, this old woman's behind me beeping, and she's like, and I go, the car's dead, it's, I can't move, you have to go around me, I can't move it. Anyway, I'm sitting there for a while, people beeping at me, I'm just sitting there like a fucking clown, I uh, don't know what to do, called AAA, um, they were like, okay, we'll send somebody out. And, uh, 
in the mix of like you know waiting for them and people beeping to me this uh guy from the air force uh he's in his uniform and stuff it says u.s air force he was probably from bedford air force base or something like i don't know going home or uh, i don't know what I, I don't know how that works but he ended up popping up and uh he was on the other side going on the on-ramp the opposite way and he he saw what was going on and you know in the typical fashion of you know defending your community and looking out for people uh he actually got out he pulled over on the island like in between the on and off ramp and uh he got out he goes you need some help and i was like uh i don't i mean i, I need to get the car out of here he's like well let's push it up onto the island so you know we set it up we go back and we just push the car the two of us push it up there so then it's sitting on the island so it's everybody can get by and uh, everybody's safe and all that and uh i was like wow thanks it's like yep no worries happy to help nice guy um and so anyway, when I was driving that Nissan, uh, I was, uh, at that time in my life, I was a little, uh, touched, I guess. Uh, I kept a machete under the driver's seat. It's, that's probably all the acid, you know, um, to, like being paranoid and stuff, like, you know, I'd, I'd flip people off who didn't do anything to me. <laughs> I just, I was so much more paranoid and, and angry at that time. So I kept the machete under my seat when I would drive. And, um, we, we ended up, I, like, I talked to AAA again on the phone and they go, yeah, we, we can't get into that intersection. There's no way a bed truck is going to be able to get in there and tow your car. So you're going to have to get a police tow. And I go, all right. Um, and, and I guess, I forget how much it was. It was like an extra 50 bucks or something. I was like, can I get a, like a discount or something? Like, well, I'm sort of being, like, I'm inconvenienced. And now I'm being inconvenienced again. Like, could, I have to pay more money because AAA are a bunch of fucking pussies. But that was my attitude at the time. Um, I completely understand now why it had to go like that. So, police come and to send like a towing company. And they, they uh, you know, they block off a little area of the intersection and they tow it. Um, so they tow it to my mechanic. And my father, like, he, he's on his way to pick me up, and I'm just, like, walking. And that's, it's only a town over, but it's actually a long distance to just, like, walk. Like, in, this is, like, midsummer. It's I'm fucking sweating. So, eventually, my father, I see him driving by, I wave him down. And, uh, he's... <laughs> I'm I'm on the opposite sidewalk and he's on the other side of the street and he, like what do you want me to do? Or like, like just turn around, just, to, just go go down that street, turn around. And, so he picks me up, <laughs> and so we go to my mechanic. My mechanic's like, "There's nothing we can like. The car's dead. It's it's totaled. Not, there's no like physical damage to the car, but it you know it." It ran out of life. Like, it was just dead. Uh, it was the engine. So we're like, oh, all right. We go home. We're on our way home. So that, cause the, my mechanic's right up the street. Uh, and we get to a point, and I go, oh, fuck. I go, Dad, we gotta go back. I forgot something. So... <laughs> I go back with a postal bin, right? And I had a sweatshirt in the car. 
So obviously I forgot that. Um, and I, I walked in there. I was like, Dad, I'll, I'll, I'll go take care of it. I'll be right back. Just wait here. And I was telling him about this the other day. Because he, he, and he didn't laugh at all. Um, <laughs> but I, I went and I go, hey, guys, I, I just forgot something in there. I got to grab it. What are you, trash it? And I grabbed the machete out of the, like, from under the driver's seat and throw it in the postal bin. And then I put a, uh, the sweatshirt that I had in there on top of it. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just getting my sweatshirt, some CDs. And they were all laughing their asses off. Like, they knew, they saw it. They, they knew it was there. <laughs> and they're a bunch of Armenian guys, too. They probably would have just taken it and kept it. But, yeah. They just a... Uh, just a not so quick uh, story about my Nissan Maxima. It's, it's good shit. It's laughing about that. You're not supposed to have a machete in a car. What the fuck? I mean, God forbid I ever got like pulled over by the police and they like searched my car. I'd be completely fucked. But I don't. I don't play games like that anymore. Like I. I was fast and loose back then. Now I'm just like tired. Um, I don't think anybody's out there to harm me, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> but that was just when you when you go back and you think about it, you're like, John, really? <laughs> I mean, there are dudes who keep like illegal guns in their car and shit. I don't know, or legal guns. I don't know. Or any kind of weapon. I don't fucking worry about it, man. It's a funny time in my life. <laughs>